someone's tongue in this. Wanna try that again? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Dan and I'm a senior software engineer at Unity. My name's Kurt Anderson and I'm a senior solutions architect. My name is Aaron Moon. I'm a senior solutions architect for Unity. I'm Sam Bellomo and I'm a netcode engineer for the samples team. I'm tech owner for samples uh, on the multiplayer team. In a peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer model, we are connecting players' devices together. So players' mobile phones, consoles, they are communicating with each other and they are the ones that are responsible for game steer. A dedicated game server model is really having that bit of security over that authority. It decides as a third party what is right and wrong, who wins, who scores, without having a client who is a participant in the game, essentially, player in a football match who decides the score. Peer-to-peer -peer can be a lot of hidden complexities. Um, the fact is you're running a master client, you're hosting the match al alongside of what you're playing. Um, that could be hosted on many different computers with varying hardware. So the entropy of that makes it very difficult for the game studio to support. Your live ops team may actually end up having more problems and spending hours and hours of time troubleshooting that rather than just having a dedicated game server where that fleet is homogenous, largely the same, and nothing in that environment changes drastically. You have complexity in TGS side and you have complexity in peer-to-peer -peer side. Both have their own level of complexity. It really depends on what you want to spend your brain time on. Peer-to-peer, -peer, you'll have your client and your server code running in the same process. You'll need to make sure that you're, you're not fighting for resources with your server code and your client code. Uh, you'll need to make sure that when you're actually coding your client and your server code, that you're not mixing things up. It can become complex just from a programming perspective. With the DGS stuff, you need to not only launch your and build your player, you also need to build your server and you need to be able to, to launch it on your hosting and you need to be, make sure that it actually runs and be able to accept new players. Outside of competitive gameplay, there are some games that would fit uh, with the DGS model. Uh, you take a co-op game that will have a super sword that you can get only in that specific room of that specific dungeon. And that super sword, you can sell it on your internal marketplace for some coins, gold coins that you have in your game. All of that, you don't want to let a client host. So you want to put all of that on your dedicated game server. Game types that have a lower data rate or a lower need to exchange amounts of data can be a better fit for peer-to-peer. Real-time strategy, turn-based, those are tending to be better fits for peer-to-peer. -peer. But again, it's, your mileage will vary depending on your gameplay features, numbers of players, that kind of thing. So I think there's many games that fit in the peer-to-peer -peer model. Um, mostly mobile games, people will see that. And that's because they don't want the added complexity or cost of adding a dedicated game server and all the associated things that come with that. And maybe you need to go full-blown dedicated game server. You know, maybe there is a real competitive advantage to doing that. Maybe there's a security model you're trying to preserve. You don't want people to see other people's IP addresses. All of those different models have purposes that they're built for, but to be honest, it could be done a number of ways and it's really dependent upon what your studio wants to accomplish. As a client host, I have zero latency over the game that's happening. This is not fair. If I'm a hunter and I'm hunting five victims and the five victims are connected to me, I have zero latency. They have 80, 100, 200 milliseconds of latency. While with DGS, everyone has the same type of latency. Uh, maybe a dedicated game server model makes sense on launch where you have a high number of players, you're getting a good return on your investment, and you're able to generate a lot of revenue. When you start to long tail, the cost of a dedicated game server can become cost prohibitive. So in that situation, we'll see some of them go back to a peer-to-peer -peer model. So player experience may be impacted a little bit, but it keeps the game alive. It keeps it online and it keeps it uh, living on. There's no hard and fast answer to say one is going to be more complex than others. Dedicated game servers have complexity around scale, provisioning on demand, performance, whereas in a peer-to-peer -peer model, if you've got a lot of players or a lot of features or uh, managing client authority and cheating and abuse of game state is a complexity there. Every game is different. Every team have different levels of experience. Your mileage will vary. Uh, it's best to make an informed decision based on how your game works. I would mitigate post-migration without using DGS just by making sure that there's another nod 
in my system that has the same state as my host. So it could be another client that is elected as a new host. It could be a, a nod in relay that just sends that data to the, to another host. It, it, it really depends on the solution, but usually you, you want to be able to have that type of backup for your, your, your server's data. In the case where you have no choice, you would have to mirror the simulation and then weigh up the effectiveness of those simulations to see who is in charge. Essentially running the simulation in parallel with each other and then deciding which one is best, which is the most effective, which one is the most responsive, and then migrating between that. And you can't do that if one person is the potential host. I think we're getting to the point where that cost is mitigated by a lot of different aspects. That said, peer-to-peer -peer has been around for a long time. There's still use cases for it. I mean, I can imagine a single player game that may want to interact with a couple of different people every once in a while. You don't want to be pigeonholed into a situation where you're unable to make technical choices moving forward. You don't want to be corralled or railroaded into being unable to be agile with your development lifecycle. We want to be in a place where we have engine agnostic solutions that are able to get your players together, connected and playing fun games. You really have to think about a few different things. You've got to think about how is it going to run in the long term? Are you trying to deliver a very competitive game where a dedicated solution is almost a must? Or are you trying to deliver a casual game where if you're cheating or manipulating the environment, you're cheating yourself or your friend group? You want to think about how that experience is going to be viewed in the long term and make the decisions. I think the future of hosted game services infrastructure is going to be blurring these lines between peer-to-peer -peer and a dedicated game server model. There won't be this clear delineation between, okay, I need a relay or I need a dedicated game server instead. We'll be trying to get users and developers to a place where they didn't need to think about these things quite so much. It will be more of a turnkey solution. I just need multiplayer, drop in, that kind of thing. We all started talking about cloud a really long time ago. Nobody really knew what it was. It was largely an engineering space. People understood very little about it. And over time, you develop tools to shortcut it, to string different services together, to make it very reliable, very scalable and dependable. And I think that's where we're going with game scaling. I think that's what's going to happen. It's going to be more pluggable. It's going to be very templated and very easy to succeed. That infrastructure is going to be standardized. And I see that happening really soon.